thank you guys uh, for hanging out. Uh, I know there's like big stuff going on in terms of uh, award shows and all that kind of good stuff, but I'm sure you got your TiVo, right? So we're going to go ahead and get on into this. Again, uh, my apologies for the uh, slight delay as we were working on my uh, foolish mindset of not being able to understand how to run a webinar. <laughs> so at any rate, I just want you to know, and I think Shauna gave a little bit of a hint, you know, that the presentation that you're about to see is rated PG. That's because you never know where I might go with it, but understand that this is done for adults. All right? You're going to have a good time, but I have to put that out there anyway. Um, I always like to start off, and, and I always go back to this movie that I love because the Matrix is a movie that just always moves me, and I love watching it. Just recently showed it to my daughter. She's 13, and now she's a big Matrix fan, so I'm pretty happy about that. But I like to ask people, are you the one? And what that, what that is all about, really, is that only one out of the three of you, so for every three person, only people, only one person is actually going to take the things that they've heard in this webinar and all the stuff that they probably heard over the weekend and actually do something with. And if you are that one person and you take this stuff, it will literally change your life. And that's what it's all about. You being that one that's going to choose between the red pill and the blue pill, are you going to still stay asleep or do you want to know what the real deal is and be able to control your environment? Because that's what uh, uh, the matrix was all about, the control of your environment. So hopefully we have the right one on this call. My name is John Lawson. I'm the CEO of Third Power Outlet. I'm also a power seller on eBay. That's what I do. That's my kind of background. I've actually built a small home-based business into a pretty pretty exciting business. Uh, I've been featured in open forum. I actually went to California and did a commercial for American Express. I've been in MSN Money. I've been on Fox News. It's been a crazy, crazy couple of years as the business has grown to the point where people are actually taking a little bit of notice on what a small home-based business can turn into. And that's just about me. So let's look at computers because I'm an old school computer guy. I used to do this uh, computer thinging back in the late 80s. Well, actually mid 80s because I remember having a friend that had a TRS-80 computer and that's when I first started working on them. And if you remember computers, especially in the 80s, early 90s even, that they were all text-based. It was either a black screen or a blue screen with some text on it. And the way you got that text or the way you interacted with that device was through a keyboard. There was just a keyboard. You know, if you wanted to move around, you hit the tab key to get to the next open line. All right? And the creation that you would do on that single terminal would be stuck on that one PC. If I had a file, that I wanted to share, I would have to save it to this floppy thingy. I know I'm, I'm aging myself. A floppy disk, and then you'd have to walk over to the other computer, plug that floppy disk in, copy it to that other computer, and then that person can use or see or view your item. I know, so archaic, but that was personal computing 1.0. 2.0 in this evolution was a graphical interface. And I remember the first time I saw a mouse, I was like, wow, that's so cool. How does that work? What is that going to do? And to be able to actually have the ability to use that mouse in a graphical environment where all I had to do was click on that thing, and it would start up a whole other program. It was really fantastic innovation. And then came, in that same time, was a new way to share my items without having to actually save it and move it physically, I could use things like email. And a lot of people had AOL email. And that was a real game changer because we could share actual 
uh, communications without having to write it on a disk and walk it across the room. And that, of course, was the beginning of the first iteration of Internet computing with the web. So today, we're in a new phase. We're moving from just the mouse or the mouse to a ability to touch the actual screen and manipulate our screens with our fingers. No longer are we just communicating what we created, but we're actually consuming it and sharing it, meaning that I can take what you've done, change it, and reshare it with the world. It's an absolutely fundamental change for computing. And now we don't have to drag this big box and this big monitor and this large keyboard. We can do all of that on our cell phone or our mobile device. So now we are moving into what I like to call a new web experience. And this new web experience is personalized. It has unique results. It's based on where you are. So it's location based oftentimes. And it has historical behavior that you are able to make very, very unique and personalized for that user. So when I search for something inside of Google, I do not get the exact same thing that you get. I get a little bit something different based on my personalization. So this is a new way or a new web experience. It's socialized. We're able to share it with one another. And it's pretty easy to consume because I get it from you, you share it with others. And we are all in the conversation at the same time with these tools. Lastly, of course, it's mobilized. Now it's no longer just attached to the location that we are, but that actually moves with us through our cell phone, our iPads, and any other kind of small computing device that we are starting to see come up with mobile communication attached to it. And it's bringing on a little bit of something else pretty unique is that it's changing from an internet experience to an application experience. And I have a, my own ideas about applications wherein, you know, we're doing a lot of applications now, but I believe that's a hybrid because of the speed of actual computing on a lot of these mobile devices based on network capacity. But I think at some point the app itself will, you know, start giving way again to a real true internet experience. We'll see. I don't know. But it's definitely a mobilized experience that we are feeling right now. So what is that doing for us in our businesses? What it's really doing is it's removing these walls, this prison wall that we've all tried to put up to keep our customers inside of our space. You know, what is happening now is they're not just sitting at your website looking for your items. They might actually do searches on a whole nother website and then end up buying on a, a totally different website. You could do your research on a product at a store now and then end up making the purchase at a brick and mortar store, end up making the purchase on your cell phone. So the walls that we've been trying to keep these customers inside of is no longer there because they have the freedom now to get into the buying process anywhere they want to based on all of these technologies that they have at their disposal. The customer now is in control of their own experience. We don't necessarily control it the way we would like to control it. It was, pretty, it was pretty fun while we could control them and keep them inside of our own little sphere, but now things are changing. And of course, for us, it's time to grow up because the competition is right 
below you in search, above you in search, right next to you in the dual screen, I don't know. But it's right there, in your face. The technology is getting better and better and faster. The industry of e-commerce is changing. And of course, the economy is putting a, uh, a burden sometimes on everyone. And these things are really, really changing what you and I need to do to be successful. So what I've got here is that you've got three little uh, uh, circles here, half circle, quarter circles, okay? And you look at the bottom left corner, and that says baseline. That's the features that everybody pretty much has. I mean, right now, if you're on the Internet and you're doing e-commerce, everybody has a website. If you don't, you should, right? So everybody has a website. Just because you have a website really doesn't give you that much differentiation between you and your competitors because everybody has one. Then you move up in the next phase to strategic. Well, maybe you've got a Facebook page. Everybody else doesn't have a Facebook page. Just a few of our competitors have Facebook pages. So now we're in the strategic mode where we're doing things that are kind of new, but over the next 12 months, we'll end up being baseline. I say that if, if you think Facebook pages today are new, this time next year, they'll be pretty much baseline. You'll need that. Then you want to move up into the highest level here, which is the biggest differentiator and has the lowest adoption of other people in your industry. That's the visionary. That's when you're actually aware of things that are experimental, concepts that are brand new, and you're actually taking those concepts and visions and, and implementing them into your business to change the experience and to give you an edge up on all of the competition. And that, my friends, is what I'm here to talk to you about. Social media. I love social media. Why do I love social media? Because it's a low-cost solution for a high-end technology. Now, let me explain something to you. Everybody, here's what people are doing today. I like social media because how much is it? It's free. Uh, you know what that is actually doing? That is almost, so is love. Love is free, but that doesn't mean it doesn't cost something. Love is free, but that doesn't mean that it's something you should abuse just because it's there. And I think people are taking uh, social media and using it in a manner, just because it's free, you know, they think all of a sudden that this free thing is not necessarily to be taken with the most greatest understanding. So we don't treat it as valuable as it is. So you've got all these people and they come out to you now and they'll talk to you about social marketing. And they don't give you hard and concrete fast facts about social marketing. They really give you this theoretical religion of throw it up against the wall and let's see what happens. They don't tie social media to return on investment. They don't tie social media necessarily to how it's going to make you money. And I'm here to tell you that social media is not a religion. So it, I'm not waiting for some spooky, empirical spirit to come over me after I do social media and suddenly my business is going to be absolutely fantastic. You want to shun those kind of social media specialists. And there's a lot of social media specialists out there. Oh, you're a social media specialist. Hi, that guy's a social media guy. Oh, there's a, everybody's a social media specialist today. Everybody's a social media guru. Well, I will tell you personally, I'm not a social media specialist. Not at all. I'm 1,000% e-commerce. I've got over 111,000 feedbacks, quarter of a million e-commerce transactions on the internet. I'm top rated on two platforms, eBay and Amazon, over 200,000 views on my YouTube channel, and 41,000 people follow me on Twitter. So yeah, I've got credential, but my credential 
is based on e-commerce because as far as I'm concerned, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. So show me the money. Okay, I went all through that, right? Let me just give you this little inspiration that I had one day. I was watching my niece. She's playing out in the front yard, and she's playing with her bubbles. And she's got a big bottle of bubble maker. And she's got her wand, her bubble making wand. And of course, you know, the first part of the day, I'm showing her, I'm blowing the bubbles, she's chasing them, I'll catch some of the bubbles on my wand, and she wants to be like me. So when I give her the bubbles, here you go play. She's trying to do what I was just doing, which was catching that bubble on the wand. Unfortunately, the entire time I am watching her, she will blow the bubble, begin chasing it, but at the same time, her brain is so on focus on chasing that bubble to catch it that she is not paying attention to the bottle in her other hand. And she's letting that bubble bottle fall to the ground. Well, the bubble bottle is not falling to the ground, but it's tipping over, and all the bubble juice is falling out. And then, you know, how, how what, maybe five bubbles later, she's crying because she can't make any more bubbles. Oh, Uncle Johnny, my bubbles aren't working. I'm like, yeah, you spilled it all. That's why your bubbles aren't working. What we do a lot of times is we chase the bubble, and we end up spilling the actual thing that is allowing us to generate the bubble. We've gotten into the point now where we think sometimes that our business model is lacking. But the business model isn't lacking. We are no longer facilitating that business model to the effectiveness that we once used to. What got us here is what's going to keep us here. It's not the new bubble that you just blew. It's not social media that's all of a sudden going to make your business successful. You are already successful and you created the business and it was successful. And if you're having problems in the business, figure out first if you got bubbles in the bottle before you go chasing after the bubble in the air. I hope that makes sense because it's so vital to you and I. So what I've done is taken social media and I've used it as a test bed. And I've done a bunch of research. I've done this, it says hundreds of tests. I've probably done thousands of tests. I'm constantly testing. I'm straight up ABT when it comes to social media because like we said, it's free. So it's very easy to run tests. And what I'm going to give to you today is my educated opinion. This is not necessarily 1,000%. Oh, John said that. That's supposed to be blah, blah, blah. No. This is my educated opinion. This is not something I read in a book. No. This is not somebody. So I didn't go to some course and somebody taught. No. This is actual data that I personally have done and I'm bringing to you take it what you like of it what you don't like just leave it alone that's all you got to do the world of social media is ginormous it's huge right now they're estimating that there's more than 1800 social media sites in existence and that's just in English you throw in Korean you throw in Chinese, you throw in Japanese, you throw in French, you throw in German, you throw in Spanish. I don't know what that number is, but that number is ginormous. Here's the key, is that that represents your Facebook fan page. So you're wondering why you're not getting the traffic you wanted or any sales from your fan page. It's because you're a needle in a haystack. And if you know your position, you can play your position. But if you think all of a sudden that just because Facebook has half a, mil, a half a billion people on it and you created a page, you're going to get a half a billion people seeing your stuff, you're delusional. Stop it. Don't be delusional because we're business people. Delusion will actually make you broke in business. How many of you remember the microwave oven? How many of you remember the microwave oven when it was a brand new invention? I do. 
pretty new. I remember my father was one of the first people on the block to have a microwave oven. And one of the things that used to make us, we just had so much fun watching popcorn pop. I, I mean, it was just, wow, popcorn's popping inside, wow. Remember, because we used to have this thing called Jiffy Pop. And it would come in that little tin foil with a, like a hanger handle. Remember that? I know, I know, I'm dating myself. But that's what we used to have before the microwave. And then when the microwave came on, you could put the popcorn in there, turn it on a couple of minutes, and boom, you could sit there and watch it pop. I could not make my children today watch popcorn pop. Why? Because they're just not interested. What was interesting to us as new technology, for them, it's not new technology. It is just the way popcorn is made now. So, hey, I get it. Don't be focused totally in on the technology. Focus in on what the technology can do for you. And that's what's going to bring us today to the topic, which is the five fingers of death. I got a free white paper out there. Go out there, download it. We're going to tap on some of this stuff, the time I'm looking at it. We got about 30 minutes left. I've got like a thousand slides left. So I'm going to be running pretty fast through it. But you can go over there, get the white paper. It's free at fivefingersofdeath.com, okay? And it says five fingers, because they have an S, five fingers of death. Put an S on that five fingers. Yeah, make sure you do that, because somebody's taking advantage of that and sends you to, like, a kung fu movie and yeah. uh, yeah. five fingers of death, the kung fu movie. He's probably going to get yes. a bunch of bounce rates right now. So put that S in. Put the S in. Okay. I'm <laughs> sorry. Just thought I'd tell you guys. If Thank you get you. the kung Thank fu you. movie, that's not John. He's not trying to karate chop you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So use the URL in the bottom right, right up under it. It's got the S on it. Sorry about that. Typo. My assistant is fired. That's okay. It's hey, all right. it proves we're not all perfect, but it's all That's about right. the content. It's all about the content. <laughs> Thank you, Shauna. Oh, you're welcome. Love you. <laughs> Love you, too. So let's go over the five fingers, all right? And I'm going to break each one of these down. But we got sales, CRM, UGC, and I know these are a bunch of acronyms. I'm just going to leave them like that. SEO, you know that one, and then brand, okay? And then we're going to go into each one. First, we're going to deal with the sales funnel. I call that number five on the list. Sometimes it's number one. This time it's number five on the list. And we're going to count down backwards, okay? The sales funnel. What's cool about the sales funnel? Well, here's the way the sales funnel was represented in the old days. You had the top of the funnel, which was you make somebody aware of your product. And if you look on the left-hand side, there's this arrow, and it says TV, print, radio, cinema. That was traditional media. You would use traditional media to make the top of the funnel of awareness and interest as large as you could. All right? And you would take all of those prospects that came into the top of the funnel and push them all the way down to that first blue line where they actually would make a purchase. You would get them aware of the product. You'd get them interested in the product. You'd make them consider purchasing the product. And then you want them to purchase it from you so you would be the preference of that purchase and then make the purchase from you. And then the bottom of the funnel got a little bit smaller and thinner because it cost a lot of money to do up sales. I mean, if you want to do an upsell, let's say you're doing a TV product, you're doing the commercial, you want to do the upsell, you needed a salesperson on the other side of that transaction to actually talk to them about, hey, since you're ordering that, how about ordering this? And it's very expensive. Cross-selling. Here's something that we sell also that you might be interested in. That also was hard to do and required a lot of money. And brand loyalty, oh, give me a break. Affinity programs used to be so expensive. Coupon programs. Give me, oh, man, I, can you imagine people used to have to print coupons out and mail them? Oh, God, how archaic was that? So it was very expensive to make money after the first sale, so that's why the funnel got, gets a little bit smaller. Move to today. Old media or traditional media, now the prospects are a little bit smaller. 
I mean, when you had three channels versus 3,000 channels, you know, I mean, everybody's got a channel now. I don't care if you're blue polka dotted and like ice cream. We have a channel for you. You know, everybody's got a channel. So it's not as easy to get that broad range and broad rating that you would get with TV. Forget about print. I don't even know how many trees are we killing this year for print. It's a lot less than 10 years ago. That's for sure. You know, so print media is definitely a smaller funnel. Radio, outdoor, you know, movies, all of that kind of stuff is changing. So that makes the funnel out at the top a little bit harder. But guess what? Thanks to direct media, things like email, social media, video marketing, mobile marketing, it's making the bottom of the funnel a lot easier to manage, to maintain, and to get into. So once somebody actually purchases from you, it becomes very valuable for you and I to use direct media, multi-channel marketing to actually get them to buy more from us. And that's the important part of the sales funnel and how it relates to social media. Brand marketing. Let's go over this one. First, what is a brand? Well, it's what makes a customer choose your product or service over everyone else. Remember that. It's not the picture that you see in the background. I think that's what our people get branding mixed up with what the Cowboys do in Texas. So what we end up trying to do is we want to brand them literally. We want to tie their ass up, throw them on the ground, heat up a big iron, and pow, burn their, our brand on their butt. Well, that's not the way it works, guys. You know, so this nonsense that I see sometimes from, from, from marketers of constantly telling me every product that you have in your 5,000 SKUs suddenly keeps coming up on Twitter every two minutes. That's the old, that's the, you, you really think that you're going to wrestle somebody down, fire up the fire, put in the brand, and stick it on their ass every time and that's what you do in Facebook you're bothering me constantly telling me you just released a new uh, 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 product out on eBay please go look at it no you're wrestling people down to try to brand them that's not what a brand is a brand is what's going to make me choose you over everybody else out there Let's look at some great examples. These are some great brands in e-commerce. If I just say Zappos, you already know that you're going to get great service on shoes. Not only that, you probably know about their 12-month return policy. You know all of the great things about people talking about the fun that is in the Zappos experience. That's branding. It's not just the word Zappos or their logo. No, it's the experience, and that experience is what's going to make everybody else not choose any of those other services and buy only from Zappos. Groupon, if I just say the word, you know what the experience is. I can get 50% off on something somewhere. You already know it. Amazon.com, what is that? You already know. It's not just that they sell books anymore. They got the Kindles. They've got uh, shipping. They're doing now the, 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 the uh, digital downloads. You know that when you order that product, it's going to get to your door in probably 48 hours. And if you got Amazon Prime, you add a couple of three, four dollars to that, and anything you order, you can get it the next day. That's the experience. That's why Amazon doesn't necessarily have to be the cheapest. It's just one of the best, and it's going to make people buy from that. And of course, and I don't know everybody, when we talk about e-commerce, a lot of people overlook the fact that Apple is one of the biggest e-commerce platforms out there. They do more transactions on the Internet than most other companies. And Apple has an experience in their brand. You know it's high-tech but easy to use. It's cool. 
It's got great features. As soon as you see that apple, you know it. That's brand identity. But you're not identifying necessarily with the cost of an item. You're identifying with all the cool things that they've done. That's brand. So here's the five C's of branding. You have to have a clear message. You got to project credibility. Credibility. <laughs> you got to make the connection. Create loyalty and convert that loyalty into money. That's the five C's of branding. Do it and you will have an amazing transformation of your company. And how you use social media to do that is very, very, and, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you an example in the real world. Okay, maybe two. I think I got a couple. We'll run quick. Domino's Pizza, you heard about this story, I'm sure. There's a woman that calls Domino's Pizza every day. And she called every day for three years. She would order the same pizza, pepperoni pizza, delivered to her house every day. Matter of fact, the people at Domino's got so used to her ordering that pizza every day that they would actually make the pizza and have it ready for when she would call so they could put it in the oven when she made the phone call so they could get it out to her as fast as possible. It was one of their best customers one of their most consistent customers. They didn't have that much of knowledge of who the person was, but they knew the experience Domino's did. They had a relationship. That woman did not call in for her pizza one day. The manager, the manager that morning said, wow, you know, she didn't call in for her pizza. And the manager that had been the manager the day before and the day before that said, you know what, she didn't call on our days. That's three days in a row that she never, she didn't even call and order the pizza. So the Domino's driver gets in her car, goes over to the lady's house, bangs on the door, and then goes next door and asks the neighbors, have they seen her? Nobody's seen her. She calls the police. They have to break the door down and find the woman laying on the floor. She'd fallen and could not get up, just like the commercial. Domino's saved that woman's life. But what was it? It was the relationship. Not one-way relationship. It was a two-way relationship. They knew her. She knew them for their constant every day. They were going to bring her a pizza. They also knew that every day she was going to order a pizza. It was a two-way relationship. And you see the benefit of that. Because now that relationship, I don't know how much free media they've gotten. But I know in my mind now, when I think pizza every once in a while now, I'm thinking Domino's. They help that brand through that relationship. Your brand reputation is the most important thing in the world. Don't muck it up. Stop it. You're messing up your brand. Once you destroy a brand, it is almost darn near impossible to bring it back from the dead. It's hard. I'm watching a company try to do it right now. I'm watching eBay trying to bring the brand back after it got bad feelings from a lot of people and bad experience. And it's a hard struggle, a hard struggle. Don't mess up your brand reputation. Stop tweeting and bugging people. Stop it, because all you're doing right now is making your brand go down in value. Give them something to hold on to. And one more example. I don't know if you saw this. This was an, a, a campaign, a social campaign from Dockers. Basically, Dockers had this set up, and they had a camera across the street. It was one of those almost like a candid camera set up. And this woman would walk down. She, they went to five cities, five major cities, Atlanta, New York, L.A., I think Houston, somewhere else. I, don't, I can't remember all the other cities. Chicago, and yeah, I don't think it was Houston. But anyway, they went to five cities, okay? I don't care about all the other cities. I just care about Atlanta. That's my hometown. <laughs> so she would walk down the street carrying a lot of papers. And the setup was that she would drop the papers. And they would count to see how many people would go past 
that woman or before somebody would help her. And I will tell you, Atlanta won. Only they, they counted and on average eight people would walk past before somebody helped her. And of course, New York was the worst. They had 50 people walk by before somebody would help. Pretty amazing. So doctors use this information. And at the end, you know, the candy candy, you're on candy camera. Well, basically, they would say, you know, we are with doctors and we want people to know that chivalry is not dead. And they would get the person to tell them, say that inside the camera. They would put this on Facebook and they created a whole campaign around chivalry is not dead with doctors. Really cool campaign. And it really got brand affinity with the people that love doctors. Very clever. How can you scale that down into your world and use it? I don't know, but I'm sure there are ways. But what now you're doing is giving good, fun content that people can grab onto, and then you are putting your brand out there. Pretty good stuff. How do you watch out for your brand? Google Alerts. I don't know why this thing is still in beta. I mean, it's been in beta since what? I don't know, 2006 maybe? It's 2007. It's ridiculous. But Google Alerts, you put up, you set it, and forget it. Every day, it can send it to you. If Like, these are my alerts, Third Power Outlet. That's my company. Both spell both ways, bandanas. We sell those. I follow eBay news, e-commerce, all that kind of stuff. And I, and I tell it how often I want it. If I only want partial results or all the results, you can set that up. Google Alerts, go out there, do it, make it happen, make it fun for your brand. That's how you keep a watch. Another way to keep a watch, another tool. I told you I'm going to go fast now. <laughs> Back type, all right? Back type. You can enter this in and you can see and measure how many times people are actually engaging with your brand on places like Twitter. So it'll show you exactly how many people are saying things about your brand on these locations or, even better, your customer's brand. It'll also show you some of the top influencers. So if I put in colder ice, these are some of the people that are top influencers. Cat, hey Cat, she's one of the top influencers. And also the latest tweets for that brand. So this is not just for your brand, but it's also for your competitor's brand. And also in the bottom, it's showing uh, you some of the latest pages where that brand was actually mentioned. So that's kind of cool. All right? That tool, again, is Backtype. All right? Go to Backtype. You can do that. All right? Next one, social mention. Again, another thing that shows you how many times your brand is being uh, uh, talked about in social media spots, okay? And you can go through and it'll tell you the strength, the passion, the reach. You can figure out all that kind of stuff. What I like is the stuff on the left-hand column. I've separated it out. You see where it says sentiment? It's sentiment. It's got the top keywords, top users who's using it the most, you know, uh, hashtags and sources. That is some valuable, valuable data, not just for your brand, which is very valuable for that, but even more valuable when you're looking up your competition. Uh, if this is some great ways to keep up with what's going on with your brand and your products inside of social media. Customer relationship management. That's what CRM stands for. All right? Customer relationship management, to be as simple and plain as I can about it, it's about ex extending the lifetime value of your buyer. So the, from the first time they buy from you to the last time they buy from you. And it also what we want to do is increase that frequency that they buy from you so that they drop into your store. Let's say over the lifetime value, on average, people buy from us four times. Well, we want to increase that to six times. How will that change your bottom line? It will change your bottom line immensely if everybody bought from you more times in their lifetime cycle. And, of course, using a personalized experience on the front end, the back end, when you're, doing, when you're dealing with customer support. Customer relationship management. What it's allowing us to do inside of social media is actually see what our customer is doing it, oftentimes right as they do it. I mean, right now, you just recently, I mean, before I came on, Shauna said, tweet something. 
guess what? We can see who tweeted it and when. Instantaneously. That's social media. And it's almost given us this big brother feeling. Because you understand that if I have your Facebook account, your Google information, all of your places you went, and your Equifax, I pretty much know everything I want to know about any individual. I can't get that information all together, but we know that if somebody could pull it all together, they'd know who you are, what you are doing, where you are from location-based stuff, how much you might be spending, what turns you on, what kind of sites you've been to, and how often you've done it, and when. When was the last time he came to that website? When's the last time he did a check-in from this place? So we all were afraid in 1984 of Big Brother. Now we understand that it wasn't really something to be fearful of. It's just something we ended up opting into. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. But the power of social intelligence is very important. We've already covered this, the what, the when, the where, the who, the why. All of that can be answered inside of social media when it comes to your brand and its affinity to your custom. A cool tool, I still love this tool, Reportive, if you take this, you install it, instead of if you've got only for, this only works right now I believe for Google or for Gmail, okay, or for Google Apps Mail, but instead of on the right hand side where you would normally see ads, it will overwrite that area with the social media profile. So this is my friend Jeff. When he writes an email to me, I get to see, he just let me use his stuff, but I see all of his tweets. If I press on Facebook down near the bottom right there, it'll tell me his Facebook account, his LinkedIn account. All of this information, of course, Jeff controls in that if you make your Facebook account private, it wouldn't show up here. This is all pulled from social media sites based on your privacy settings, okay? But it's really great for your customers when they might send you some information back, you know, in, in the Q&A session of, you know, after the purchase, you can find out some great things. User-generated content. Now we're up to number two, UGC. User-generated content is simply the reviews or the feedbacks, the kudos you might get, photos that people might have of using your product. And also, user-generated content is great for an ongoing focus group to see where you're at or where your organization is at. Here's some tools for that. I like RatePoint. RatePoint allows people to give reviews and then it allows you to redisplay those reviews on your website. Of course, it's one thing for me to say, hey, this stuff is so great that I sell. It's a whole other thing when somebody says, hey, I bought this from so-and-so, and that's some great stuff, and he gives a great product. That's very, very powerful. So Raypoint is one of those tools, but there's a couple of others. Campbell is another tool you can use for getting, you know, uh, user-generated content, and Q4, that's what that is, it's a four with a Q. Q4, it's a small four-question pop-up that goes out there, and you can say the frequency, so every, let's say, 10th person that visits your website will get a short four-question pop-up says, will you answer these questions, yes or no? It's always polling to see where your customers are at, find any areas of friction, and remove them. Number one for social media and why I like it so much is for search engine optimization, SEO. We'll go through a few of these blogs, micro blogs, which are like the Twitters, social bookmarking sites, press releases, qualified links, high ranking sites. I hate when people read off this slide. I just need to drive me crazy. Well, let me read this last one, okay? Relevant content. So I'm teasing. All right. At any rate. Search engine optimization, because we know that blogging really is still in, I mean, Google's still in love with blogging. They really are. It's amazing how fast blog content rates and how high blogging content rates. And the reason why their ranking is so high is because based on historical data, 
because Google does everything based on data. They don't do any. They don't guess at anything. Based on their data, blogs are still very, very relevant content based on subject matter. And as long as that is the case, Google will constantly rank blogs high. So you have to do some blogging. I'm just telling you. That's really even though, I, and, I'll, and I'll go. I, even though I'd say maybe uh, 18 months from now, that might not be the case. But for this year and next year, you need to still be blogging. Why I say that is because social media is even changing the, the view of blogs. But that's another topic. All right? For right now, go for it. All right? Videos. You've got to also think about YouTube. YouTube being your microsite. Okay? You can group, just like I heard earlier today, they were talking about marketing on YouTube, where he was showing you how to take a link to your next video, right? You got a video that's part one, boom, here's a link to part two, or here's a link to a better, you know, a different viewpoint, blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that. You got to think about that and group like topics together in playlists. You can add those tool tips. You can link to internal pages inside of YouTube and you can link external pages in the comments. And uh, in order to do that, of course, you have to use the fully qualified URL. Remember that. And put it first in your description. So put your fully qualified URL first in the description, and you can actually link to external uh, web pages inside of YouTube by doing that. All right? And I got this hot chicks playing in the mud because that one, ladies and gentlemen, People like when I'm doing live, and I do that, and they laugh. Ha ha! And I know you're laughing right now. You're like that dude's crazy. This is a video as an example to show you how I use YouTube. And if you look at the blue box, that's one of those annotations. I just tell them get all your bandanas now at Third Power Outlet, which is our short code is thirdpo.com, right? But if you look below that. That's where I've got the fully qualified URL. Put it first because YouTube is limiting the amount of uh, characters that they're showing on each video. So you want to put it right up front at the beginning. And you see it's a blue link. People can actually click on that and move outside to my website to buy their bandanas. Do it. Do it now. It's very important. <laughs> oh, so I've talked about this video till I'm blue in the face. You saw the video. Actually, if you look, this video says it's got 123,000 views. I think the old slide, let's see, had 124,000 views. If you go out there now, it's got 150,000 actual views. Let me go backwards real quick. The thing is, if you look really closely, this is a really bad video. The quality is very, very bad. I don't have on shoes. I never show my face. And the lighting sucks. However, people keep watching it over and over again. Do you see this slope? It has no, you know, variances in it at all. That's because people are constantly watching and sharing this video. It's been out there for years now. And it's still doing mad, crazy traffic for us. Did it one time. That's the cool thing about YouTube. Blogging, you can't even get that with a blog. I made the post one time on YouTube, and it's paying off in spades for basically forever, or at least for now. And it's put me in the number one position for how to fold a bandana on Google. It's crazy. All right? Right after you see the couple of two, three things at the top, there's the video. Bang. Another tool that people overlook. It's a social tool. SlideShare ranks very high in Google because they know that a slide presentation has what it says it's going to have in it. You can actually create slideshows about your products. Wow, never thought about that, did we? Yes, you can do that, and it will rank for you, and it will give you a very good qualified backlink. 
How do you create good content? Research your keywords and use them. Use them at least once, possibly twice, in every title. Talk about benefits. Do not sell the product. That's what your website's for. You just want them to be interested in the benefits of the product. You can sell it to them on the website. Push them to the website. That's where you make the sale. You don't do it right there. If you have, you know what? It's like when you think about when you've ever shopped for a new car. They don't sell you on the car outside. They always bring you into the office. That's when they make the sale. They're not selling you outside. Stop trying to sell everybody outside. Get them inside. Get them a glass of water or some coffee. Would you like some coffee or some water? And that's when you start selling them. Stop selling on Twitter. You will never make the sale. Focus in on the questions that your customer might have. Make sure you link to that site and post as many as you possibly can. Make it an ongoing you know, task in your business. I'm running out of time. Here we go. Twitter winner. Bang, Zoom, wow, amazing, exclusive, free offers, wow. So You you picked the worst time to do that, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here crying. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Somebody shared just a beautiful story with about how the new life has changed their life. And I'm I'm a sucker. You know, you put on one of those commercials where the soldier comes home at Christmas and I'm crying. So and plus there I'm you, you know, and, and it's just it touched my heart to the very core. And mm -hmm. so you caught me when I'm sitting here with my mom and like we're in tears here because of this amazing story. Sorry. No, you're wonderful. <laughs> Don't no, I love you for that. And I have to to go back because I remember who it was because they had such a great avatar when I looked over there and it's such a cute avatar and it was like peak and I remember who it was and I know who it was I remember <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry um paper cakes if you look at that um look at the paper cakes avatar it's just so cool and it's just so pretty anyway it stuck out so I remember that that was like the last one and it said thank you John Calder ice NLE great info so anyway I, I'm gonna go grab a tissue I'll be back and I'll let you take yeah, over okay <laughs> sorry sorry everybody sorry sorry congratulations congratulations I only got a couple more slides left, so you should be really happy. <laughs> okay, this is a client, and I, I I got to work with these guys down in Australia. They actually flew me down to work with their uh, social media team and their social marketing teams. And one of the this is one of the techniques that I showed them. Okay, so they're selling stop snoring spray. Right now, I, these guys are the number one sellers in Australia. The number one e-commerce store in Australia. They're selling Stop Snoring Spray. How do we do a social campaign around that to sell for Stop Snoring Spray? I showed them a very quick tactic and I'm going to show you exactly that same tactic and you don't have to fly me to Australia to do that. Here you go. Alright? You go into Word Tracker. Now you can use any tool you like I like a uh, uh, keyword tool for Google. I know everybody talks about that, and it's free. I'm just not 1,000%, you know, uh, uh, positive that Google doesn't have some little algorithm in there so that they can get you to spend a little bit more money on keywords. So I decided to use a keyword tool that's outside of Google, Keyword Tracker. You can get the free version. That's the free version of Keyword Tracker. And get the keyword suggestion tool, all right? All you have to do is put in your topic. We put in stop snoring because we have to stop snoring spray, all right? Here's what we come back with. And the numbers on the right-hand side, just completely ignore them. But the numbers on the left-hand side are very valid. The numbers on the right-hand side are supposed to be how many people do a search on this, but those numbers are not very accurate in my humble opinion, not even in my opinion, I've actually went and did some looking and those numbers can be ignored. But the numbers on the right, in terms of how they rank, of course the number one, it's really kind of almost cut off and stop snoring. That was the original search, that would be the number one match. The next one is how to stop snoring. 
The next one is tips to stop snoring. That's another good one. Products to stop snoring and stop snoring surgery. Why did I highlight these? Is because these all would make fantastic blog post titles. These would make fantastic YouTube video titles because these are the things that people are searching for. So when they search for how to stop snoring, they should see a uh, uh, article about how you should stop, how you can stop snoring. And oh, by the way, we sell stop snoring spray. Okay, you know what I mean. You can take your nose shut. You can hit your partner until they roll over, or you can buy our stop snoring spray, which is available over here. By the way, by the way, give them good information first and then let them know about an area where they can purchase from you. Good tactic, all right? Tips to stop snoring. Boom. You can see, you can just write it, because sometimes people are like, what am I gonna write about? If I'm gonna blog, what am I gonna blog about? What you blog about is what people are searching for. And you have to understand that people normally, oftentimes, are searching for a question inside the search engine. So if you answer that question, you're going to come up in top ranking search. That's the secret. It's not a secret. It's really just, you know, common sense. But we don't think about it in that way. So that's one of the tactics. It's, it, it works, trust me. And here's the other thing. If you look at my video, it, like I said, the video we were just showing you, it tells you right up there. There's a commercial right there. Buy them here. How can I do that? The reason why I can do that is because I'm offering them value. See, we've been trained that way. That if the TV show is funny, I don't mind the commercials. If your show sucks, the commercials seem like it go on forever. So that's the key. Give them good quality information, and then you could sell them something or put a commercial in. Follow these basic SEO principles. I won't even go over them. Uh, uh, Melinda covered them in detail. But once you do this, syndicate it. Put it out everywhere, as many places as possible. And that's one thing that social media is fantastic for, which is syndicating your content. Put it out as many places as possible. Make sure it's relevant, it's good, and people want to read it. You put it out there, and they're going to share it with their friends. For videos, use to mobile. One video shared to multiple platforms a single deployment for one upload. Moving quick to mobile, all right? Let's do this real fast. Facebook, Twitter, social marketing, the showdown. People, when I've reviewed it, heard me a year ago when I was on here, I was Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Now I'm Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Why? Well, let's look at the difference. 500 million users on Facebook, 90% of everybody that is a social media user is on Facebook, and 48% of the U.S. population has a Facebook account. Twitter, around 16 million, 16 and a half million, they're, they're doing good. They've got about 16% of social users, and 9% of the U.S. population is on Twitter. But you should know the facts. And that, to me, is making a very hard case now that the social graph is Facebook. The social platform of the future is Facebook. Twitter is fantastic for live events like this one. If you're watching the TV show, everybody will tweet about it. For live events, Twitter. For everything else, Facebook. And again, my opinion. Mobile. Oh my gosh. Mobile is the fastest growing technology in history. That's not something to sneeze at. And when we talk about mobile, it's not just the phones. It's not just the phones. Because now they're making mobile appliances. Your headphone system will work with the mobile system, and you can read the book on it. And you got your uh, 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 navigational system. All of that's going to be attached to the web. And all of that's going to go up under the mobile category. Your book readers, all that stuff. Right now, there are 5.3 billion cellular users. 
That is 77%, over three quarters of the world's population is on mobile. And 200 million of the 500 million that are on Facebook access it through their mobile phone. That's an astonishing revelation. Astonishing. So you can't overlook mobile. We can talk about all these other things, but I'm telling you, mobile is going to eclipse them all so quickly you will not know what hit you. We are in the age of mobile. Speaking of the age of mobile, how old are the people on mobile? I know you think it's just your kids, but that's not necessarily the case. Look to the right of those 16 to 24 year olds and it's 25 to 34 year olds. That's not me. <laughs> I'm in the next category, you know? But still, look at the, the uh, uh, usage in our category of 35 and even 45 and older. And it's just going to grow. They asked the question, where do you do your mobile webbing mostly at? And over 90% of the people do it at home. So it's not something they're just doing on the road. They do it at home. They're doing it at work. In the car, we don't like you doing it there. At a friend's house, fantastic. On the plane, definitely there's nothing better to do at that point. <laughs> but you're able now to take the web with you, and that's what's important. They're projecting 2012 that the uh, mobile, there will be more mobile devices sold than PCs. I think they got it wrong. I think this year could quite possibly be the turning point. I think it might be, especially with all the tablets that are coming out. What you guys want to do is tie technology to automation. And these social platforms will allow you to get automated and get on that mobile. You want to do that, you want to do it now. You want to do it as fast as you possibly can. I don't want to hold you past my time. I know we've gone long, but I appreciate you sitting here and dealing with this, I'm going to skip to the end because I don't want to take up all of your time. But I want you to recognize that everything that you've heard this weekend is really for you to now navigate your own path. We all have our own paths to, to follow. We have different businesses and different business models, but these tools are now going to illuminate where we need to go and what we need to do. And that's the fantasticness, is that a word, fantasticness? That's the fantasticness of this new life event. I want to ask you one thing. This is just for me, just hook, hook, hook a brother up. All right. I want to give away five free 30 minute phone consultations. And I mean, in that 30 minutes, you can ask anything you want. It doesn't have to be just about, you know, social media. Anything you want about, you know, you want to keep it in my area of expertise, which is e-commerce. All right? And all you got to do, it's a two-step process now. Here's what you need to do. Go to Colder Ice Reviews. I hope I got that one right. Okay. <laughs> Colder Ice Reviews. On the right-hand side, there's a page or on that page, and it just, you know, ask you for a review. So I'm asking you to please put a review out there. If you do that and go to Twitter, use the at sign in my name, Colder Ice, in a tweet, and let me know that you did that, and that will qualify you. I will notify the winners via Twitter. Hey, Twitter, there's another use for Twitter. You know. All right? ColderIceReviews.com. Enter a review on that page, then go to Twitter. Use my name and somebody in the tweet somewhere. And I will let you know if you are one of the winners. We will randomly pick five for a free phone consultation. All right? That uh, doc, the white paper, five fingers. Put the S on the end. Five fingers of death. Dot com. It's over there. It's free. You want to know more about me? You want to find me? Real simple. Go to Google and put my name in and just say, I'm feeling lucky. And I guarantee you'll find me. I don't know how many people can actually do that, but that's my calling card. All right? But if you want to just email me a question, you can. John at colderice.com. Thank you all very, very much. 
I appreciate your time. We appreciate your time, and here you are with us on a Sunday night, and that is absolutely wonderful. And for those of you that are watching the NLA and NLE stream, um, I, I put something in there that uh, you need to retweet in order to win, and I'm sending it out again, which is basically that Shauna needs one of these waterproof iPad shuffles. Um, because she cries so much. <laughs> and whoever wins is actually going to win that waterproof iPod shuffle. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's, it, I know. It's absolutely horrible. Horrible. Michelle Chance donated that. Thank you so much for that. That's awesome. But um, I, 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 first of all, I, I have to tell you why I was crying, okay? Because I emailed this lady and I said can I share this and and uh, I, there's so many stories like this that touch my heart I, the, in so many ways that I can't even begin to tell you um, it, John we this new life event has touched so many people and by the way I hope after you hear this that you will share your story and say, Shauna, go ahead and share my story with other people because this woman feels so alone. She, uh, she lost her fiancé two years ago, and she's been struggling to get back on her feet after losing everything she could. She was wondering how she could possibly pay for help. Um, this weekend, we made her cry because we gave her hope. We assured her that we could get help that she needed, and there's nothing more frustrating. This is what she says. There's nothing more frustrating than flying solo and not knowing where I'm going or even getting anywhere. Your mom said, get on the bike and pedal, but without direction. I will not get far. I will have. I have no clue of what I'm doing and getting me anywhere. And if I'm doing it right, I will be listening to your show now that I found it and cannot wait for the mastermind group. And it's just, it's, it's this thought of. Oh, and Phaedra, I hope you're listening. I have to thank Phaedra for telling me about this weekend in your radio show. I call her my Southern Belle. She has helped me with a few things, and I'm grateful for her. However, um, I have to thank you. This weekend has been incredible. Thank you for taking the time to reach out to all of us who are struggling you've made a difference in people's lives and I know you've made a difference in mine now does that not bring tears to your eyes come on yeah oh yeah that's what I had read when you said who's the Twitter winner oh there you go yeah and so here's here's what breaks my heart is here she's thinking she's on the web trying to run her business she's all alone she's lost her fiance it's her and her daughter and she doesn't think that there's anybody out there that will help her and that to me breaks my heart and that's why we have to get the word out that we are here and we are willing to help and there is information available and you know, the one thing that I think that people need to understand is that although this education has been free, it is very valuable. And you mentioned that about people think because it's free, it's not valuable. Mm. Right. I, I hope they don't feel that way about this weekend. I don't think they can. I don't think so, but I hope they don't, and I hope they apply. If they apply one single little thing that they heard this weekend, they will grow their business. They will grow their business. So anyway, that's uh, – if, if you want to share your story and share it with other people here, I, I beg of you, please do. Um, when I <sighs> – I left 11 years ago and I had my kid, my, I'm sorry, my kids and their clothes and that's it. And I started my Yahoo store and here I am today. And let me tell you, I've had struggles. Um, three years ago, I came home from a conference and my husband, yeah, I got a divorce, got married again. And my husband had taken everything out of the house, all of the money out of my business account, all of my corporate money, corporate CDs were cashed in, all of my personal accounts were gone, and, and it was just all gone. <laughs> so I know about struggling. I know what it's like to come back and then have to come back again. You're not alone. You are not alone, Okay. You're not alone. We've been here, and that's why we need to network with each other. So if you have questions specifically for John, um, reach out to him. 
um, and please get in touch. He's wonderful about answering people, especially on Twitter. I know I've always seen, I've always seen him just constantly, you know, answering people and helping people. And I, now I am definitely seeing you focus more, a little bit more on Facebook. I have noticed that, by the way. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having fun over there. I'm having fun. Yeah, you are. But you know what? I think it's important, though, because you and I find each other on Twitter. We find each other on Twitter. But I think we um, store owners find their customers more on Facebook. Um, but yet you still find your customers on Twitter, too. Yeah, absolutely. They're both valuable. Yes. So here's my question to you, um, Mr. John. We've got so much information, and we're saying – we have to blog, we have to tweet, we have to Facebook, we have to do this, we have to do this, we have to do this. What would you think if, if somebody was to start tomorrow and take one thing that they really need to start doing right away, um, what would you say that that would be that you want them to start working on tomorrow? I want them to start working tomorrow. And what I mean by that is that, you know, when it comes to, and I'm, I'm doing this little weight thing, i got to work on my weight, all right? And my trainer told me, is like, look, you need to drink more water, you need to eat better, you need to exercise, and, you know, you need to change your lifestyle. Well, which one should I do first, sir? He's like, I don't care which one you do first. All of them are going to get you to where you need to be. But you got to start one of them tomorrow. So start one of them tomorrow. Don't get paralysis by analysis. Whichever one floats your boat, whichever one you think is going to make it sound fun and that you can do, if that's going to be tweaking your keywords, if that's going to be creating your Facebook accounts, I don't care. All of these have value. None of them really are ubiquitous to having the most value. Just start. I love it. Okay. I love it. The worst thing you can do is nothing. Right. The worst thing you can do. That it doesn't work. <laughs> yes. Now, here's something that I want I want you guys to pay attention to is that. Um, uh, uh, by the way, Mr. Don, um, your your fans are wanting you to place a link from your blog to give you reviews because they can't find you. So. Your fans oh, would okay. like a link. My blog. To, that's a good idea. Actually, it's on the right hand corner. Oh, right-hand corner. Okay, right-hand right corner. It's a, if on the right-hand side, if you scroll down, it says, have you heard me speak? And just there you go. Okay. forgot about that. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so he needs a button that says, would you like to review me? He definitely needs yeah. that. And see, you know what? He would have never thought of that unless you guys spoke up and said, I want to review you. Um, here's how I want to do it. And you got to listen to your customers. Listen. Always. <laughs> big fat ears. I got big fat listening ears on. Oh, you're awesome. You're awesome. Don't even think about that. I'm going to steal over the controls from you for uh, to finish up the night, and I just want to say thank you again for an amazing presentation. 